Hi there, today we're going to go over 7 tips and tricks for starting your island sanctuary and maximizing your time there as well as some important no-nos that can cost you time. This will be my mini series of island sanctuary guide videos to which you can find all the ones in the description box down below. Number 1. Don't spend the seafarer's cowrie, the blue currency right off the back. This is the blue currency that we will get while leveling up and is used to purchase all sorts of items like glamours and mounts from one of the island vendors located in your cabin. You may be tempted to get the island sanctuary gear or glamour right off the back, but we need this currency in order to upgrade later areas such as pastures and the croplands. So you don't want to leave yourself not being able to upgrade those as they come up pretty quick after the tutorial. The tutorial was helpful and not very long, but after that, you're on your own. I have learned to keep stuff until I absolutely know that I don't need it, and it really worked out this time because I would have been so frustrated if I couldn't upgrade these when it came up. By the way, if you find this video helpful at all, make sure to limit break through that like button down below in order to help me out with the YouTube algorithm as it's greatly appreciated. Number two, after being in Island Sanctuary for over a few hours, I quickly realized that we'll be on our mounts a lot. And with that, I would have a selection of a few mounts and set them to favorite. After an hour or so, you'll quickly get tired of the same mount music. So switch it up in order to keep the music fresh and live. Or you can just put on Netflix as there's going to be a lot of gathering ahead. I am going to do a breakdown of the rankings of Island Sanctuary as like a complete guide and tutorial. And when it's out, it'll be in the description box. Number three, check your buildings. Now, when I first started and plowed through this content, I was starting to see that I was done with almost everything at first. I started to read through the guide and index to start learning more about it. And it said that we can customize the cozy cabin, which is our main building. Well, when I went to the cozy cabin and to the longboard, I found that you can actually upgrade the cozy cabin to cozy cabin two which if I didn't read that, I would have not known as the game really didn't guide me there. This is a very free choice piece of content after you finish the tutorial and I love that part. It really gives you the freedom to go at your own pace, but if you're like me and want to get things steamrolling through, then make sure you check your buildings or upgrades that are available for you and get those plots built and facilities building. The facilities after the first few do take real life hours, like the landmark that you can build can take up to 12 hours earth time, so you want to start those pretty quickly. Number four, you can go in the water and dive for materials. Now this may seem silly, but it took me a good 45 minutes to realize that some of these materials are underwater in certain areas of the island. Here, I thought it was just an island we can explore, but we can also dive in the water, collect some of those necessary clam, coral, and more items in the gathering nodes. Make sure to have gathering turned on and you'll be able to spot the nodes that look like fish and that means those are underwater nodes. A quick add on tip here is that some of these materials can only be found in places that make sense. So let's take rock salt for example. You can only find those in rock salt caves which are located on sides of mountains. I would take the time to explore your island so then you can figure out where all the materials spawn as you're going to need a lot of them. Number five, you can't catch all the island monsters with just a net. You'll get more tools at later levels. Now, I was under the wrong assumption that we'll have the net and be able to catch all monsters with that up front. But of course, I was incredibly wrong. I found this out by trying to catch these incredibly cute monsters and they got away and I was getting really frustrated as to why I couldn't. Once you level up, you'll get the other tools in order to catch different species of monsters such as a rope and so on. If you try to catch someone with a net, it will show the monster sees you and you scare it away. I was really confused at first but did some digging and found out that we're just going to get more tools later on as you rank up. So make sure that you're gathering to help those ranks. This is my personal tip, I switched to Dancer when in Island Sanctuary. The On Avant ability really helps with getting between gathering nodes easier. Some nodes are close enough that getting on a mount seems a little silly, but sprinting seems super annoying. This is where the Dancer comes into play. Using the Avant ability really closes the gap between nodes quickly and seems to be the perfect job for Island Sanctuary. If you're not using Envant, then you should be getting on your mount as the mount speed is so incredibly faster, it is worth continuing to mount up between the nodes. This will make a gigantic difference in the long run as we are going to be gathering a lot and you really want to make sure to cut time where possible. This leads me to my favorite and most important tip, adjust your UI for Island Sanctuary. Now you guys know how I feel about my UI and my HUD layout. I like it to be clean and efficient. We are not needing most of our job abilities, cross hotbars, or regular hotbars while we're in Island Sanctuary. 
We are mostly using the duty actions of sprint and return, the mount button, and if you follow these tips and tricks, you'll be using Dancer. I personally set up a cross hotbar on Phi with just a mount and on Vaunt to allow for quick and easy use. If you change your HUD layout to 4 and it's not being used, then you turn all the UI off except for the map and you can still use your cross hotbar. It will just show up temporarily when you press the button and disappear again. This has been super important for my own island immersion because seeing the battle skill stresses me out. You can make a macro to put back and forth between HUD layouts 1 and HUD layout 4. So with a click of a button, you can be in your HUD layout for island sanctuary and quickly turn back to your HUD layout, let's say for dungeon running. These are just my quick top seven tips and tricks for you to get into Island Sanctuary and make the most out of it. I'm going to be putting out guides for Island Sanctuary because it's far more complex and interesting than they had led us on from the beginning when it comes to workshops, pasture raising, crops, and etc. I'm super excited to dive into it. And if you want to see more Island Sanctuary content, then make sure to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment down below so that I know people are interested in this. I do know some people who say, well, what's the point of guides if we're supposed to be going at our own pace? But with any type of content, let's say Animal Crossing, you'll see guides all over the place because you want to be able to understand the full breadth of the content and how to make it easier and more efficient when you're playing through yourself. I would really like to know your guys' thoughts on Island Sanctuary and feedback. I think that it's going really amazing and it seems to be really, really rich in content. I have been playing for a better part of the day and I'm not even at rank 5 yet, which is the next step up for more tools, more advancement, and more upgrades for all my facilities. I had a friend just go straight into Island Sanctuary and they're only at rank 8 and got time gated and can't do anything until the next day. The very last thing that I want to know is what minions are you putting out on your island? It's so cool because the minion menu allows you to separate sections of the island for minions and you can spread them out. And I'm starting to create little minion sanctuaries for certain types of minions I have where like my protector minions are in the front of my island. My work minions are in the middle of my island and my bird minions are in the back of the island. I'm just blown away by this piece of content. And before I used to log off and play, let's say Animal Crossing. And now this is like a more advanced animal crossing but with the game and character that i've put so much time into if you guys want to watch more final fantasy guide content then you can click here